Anthropogenic Activities, Stressors and Impacts, Part 1, Domestic, Agricultural or Industrial Stressors on Water Quality, Part 2, Activities Degrading Status of Pelagic or Benthic Ecosystems, Part 3, Fisheries, Part 4, Cascading Effect with the example of jellyfish and herbivory. The different parts will be presented by specialists of the corresponding field. All of them are doing research at the Mediterranean Institute of Oceanography in Marseille. Domestic, agricultural or industrial stressors on water quality, prepared by Valérie Michotet, professor in microbial ecology. Our case study is a coastal zone in which, in the bottom, is located a coastal town or a seaside resort presenting a harbor and an industrial factory in the middle uh, part of the figure and a river on the front part of the figure along which agricultural activity stands. The town, the factory, the boat and the agricultural activity generate sewage that end up, after treatment or not, in the sea and impact the quality of the coastal water. Several activities can cause introduction of microbial organisms such as bacteria or virus that may be pathogenic for human or marine life. Some microbial organisms such as bacteria or virus may come directly from inland or anthropogenic input. Bacteria in human or animal tracts can reach several kilo. Several virus can also be found in case of illness. They will be excreted through the stool and end up in the environment via various sources, waste water treatment plants or isolated coastal houses. The outflow are indicated in the figure by a black arrow in the front for the waste water treatment plant which reduce the quantity of the microorganism release. In contrast, for isolated houses, their outflow, indicated here in the bottom of the figure by a red arrow, may be untreated. Boat may also be a source of pathogenic microorganisms. Many boats do not comprise a storage tank and reject their black water, containing toilet water, directly in the sea without any treatment. Pathogenic microorganisms can also come from waste of intensive animal farming. They can be released in a river and end up in the sea if the excrements are released or stored near a river and if they can diffuse toward it because of important rain. During an illness, there is an increase in the number of released pathogenic microorganisms. In addition, several animals, such as birds, are healthy carriers of pathogenic bacteria, such as Salmonella species, for example. What are the actions to protect the quality of the water? Connection of houses, town, animal farming to wastewater treatment plant for restricting the number of reject zones, regulation for both waste, measurement of bacteria indicator of fecal contamination in water, clear separation between reject and bathing area, clear separation between reject and shell collection area. Chemical input. Anthropogenic activity can favor release of chemical products and, of, and some of them are toxic molecules in the sea directly or via river. Certain pollutants such as heavy metal pesticide may accumulate in the food web. That means that their concentration increase in body of organism from phytoplankton 
on the left part of the figure to top predator uh, on the right part of the figure. This uh, concentration of toxic molecule may endanger the marine organism or human that eat them. The commonly encountered toxic metals are cadmium, manganese, lead, mercury, chromium and radioactive metals. They can be released by industrial, mostly, but also by domestic waste. The actions to be enforced are specific treatment of industrial waste, different from domestic waste, as indicated by a black arrow on the figure. Separation of emission zone and selfish collection area. Measurement of some toxic metal concentration in selfish and determination of authorized selfish collection area. Chemical introduced by anthropogenic activities can be nutrient. They can be released in the sea directly via wastewater treatment plants or indirectly via river. The outflow are indicated by the two black arrows on the figure. If you compare this figure with the figure previously shown, you can see that the water of the river is green and there, that there is an accumulation of seaweeds on the big shore, on the rock or on the beach. Indeed, algae and phytoplankton growth is limited by some nutrients like nitrogen or phosphorus. Input of large quantity of these nutrients coming from fertilizer or animal dejection lead to algal or phytoplankton proliferation. This proliferation is called eutrophication. What are the consequences of eutrophication? First of all, the primary impact. The shores are affected by algal tides disturbing tourism and fishery. As a consequence of this accumulation, the algae died and their decomposition led to the production in the atmosphere of a dangerous gas and in the water column in the consumption of dissolved oxygen. This uh, dissolved oxygen deficiency in the water is called hypoxia and may result in turn to the death of macroorganisms such as selfish, fish and benthic and vertebrated. What are the actions to be enforced? Avoid input of nutrients in semi-enclosed bay and favor their rapid dilution. But nutrient input in the sea can also favor phytoplankton proliferation inducing strong co coloration of water as you can see on the two Pictures. This high concentration of phytoplankton, called bloom, may contain harmful species. Several phytoplankton species have been shown to synthesize toxins such as paralytic selfish poisoning, diarrheic selfish poisoning, amnesic selfish poisoning, ciguatera fish poisoning, neurotoxic selfish poisoning, cyanobacterial toxic poisoning, and estuarine associated syndrome. These harmful blooms have an impact on selfish farming, fisheries, and on marine life. They affect several seas worldwide. In the Med Sea, few of these blooms have been recorded in the West Park. As example of impact on marine life, one can mention sighting of sick and dead pelicans, sea lions and dolphins along the western California coast, linked to an increased level of toxin, death of 30 whales of Alaska, possibly linked to toxic bloom, or a red tide that lasts 18 months along Florida coast killing fish, turtle, and sharks. What are the actions that one can implement to control eutrophication? Change in the agricultural practice, for example, by restriction in the use of fertilizer, optimizing nutrient use to crop requirements, 
better cleaning of sewage and waste water, better control of diffuse urban nutrient sources such as runoff from street and storm sewers. Activities degrading status of pelagic or benthic ecosystems prepared by Delphine Thibault and Sandrine Rutan, both assistant professor and specialist in these fields. In this section, we're going to look at activities that favor the transportation and introduction of new species and invasive species. Vectors of introduction are several. From aquaculture, fishing activities, aquariums, trade, and the most important one, maritime transportation, through fooling or ballast waters. We can see on the figure on the right hand side that interconnected waterways, meaning the Atlantic or the Red Sea, in the case of the Red Sea, are very strong contributors to species transportation. Over 100 species of phytoplankton and zooplankton are transported worldwide daily, with up to 10 to the power of 5 individuals per liter of phytoplankton, mainly transported by tankers, and 250 individuals per liter of zooplankton found in bulker ballast waters. In the Med Sea, we have been estimated the maritime transport to up to 200,000 vessels a year which represent up to 30% of the world traffic. More than 400 species of alien fish and invertebrates in the Mediterranean Sea have come by way of the 145 years old Suez Canal. The rate of their arrival is increasing. Over 80% first arrived less than 50 years ago. With the enlargement of the Suez Canal, we can expect to even get more species. The Atlantic also is a contributor to new species into the Med Sea. If we look at the contribution of shipping through ballast waters or hull fulling, we can see that both the western and the eastern sector of the Med Sea has been impacted by invasive species, and up to 19 have been found in some sectors. If we look at the contribution of jellyfish, meaning proper technidarian, as well as tinophores, up to 10 species of cnidarian and two species of tinophores are strong invaders in the Med Sea. For example, Nemnopsis ladii, a tinophore, has been invaded in the Black Sea in the late 80s and now found in most of the Med Sea, west and north. Among the impact sources regarding the integrity of benthic ecosystems, we have two types of decline, local and large decline. Local decline is concerning by local destruction like coastal construction, sewage outfall, anchorage destruction. Large declines are the result of large scale events like the grazing by herbivores or the global change. Of course, sometimes, depending on its magnitude, a local event can have repercussions on a very large scale. Concerning local impact on the Posidonia Oceanica Meadow, coastal development, such as arbor or beaches development, has had irreversible destructive effects on seagrass bed by burial effects. During the 80s, coastal construction have had a wide development. Now, with the regulation, these facilities are limited, but we must remain vigilant. All sources of pollution or materials that can reduce the clarity of seawaters may be at the origin of seagrass decline because it reduces photosynthesis. Here you have some pictures of impacts on Posidonia Oceanica Mido. On the left, you have deep Posidonia beds partially buried by sediment. On the top right, an anchor in the Posidonia Mido and you can imagine that 
when the anchor will be removed, some posidonia shoots will be cut off from the ground. And below right, particles spill into the environment during the shoreline work. Coraligenous outcrops are also very sensitive to anthropogenic impact. This habitat is sensitive to physical damage caused, for example, by anchorage or fishing gear. Inputs of fine particles that did sediment can also recover and degrade the habitat. Some pictures of impact on coralligenous. On the left, uh, you have the sewage outfall of Cortu in the Calanque of Marseille. The contribution of uh, these polluted and nutrient polluted waters degrades habitats over several kilometers around the outfall. On the top right, a fishing net lost on the bottom and damaged the Gorgonian in which he is entangled. Those nets could also trap mobile fauna, it is the ghost fishing. And below, you have the effect of sedimentation on coralligenous outcrop. Hello, I'm Thomas Changeux, hydrobiologist specialized on fish and fisheries. I have prepared with my colleague Daniela Banaru a presentation on the impacts of the fisheries. Fishing is peculiar because it is the last remaining ancestral activity. Plant gathering has been replaced by agriculture and hunting has been replaced by breeding. So why are we still fishing? There is indeed an increasing demand for fish. The figure here shows that the annual food fish consumption per capita in red grew from 9 kilograms in 1961 to 20.5 kilograms in 2017. If we apply the same logic as for hunting, fishing should have been replaced by aqu aquaculture. In fact, aquaculture is progressing. But there is a problem. Pisciculture takes 3 kilograms of wild fish to produce 1 kilogram of, fair of, of farmed fish. The better way is to keep fisheries biologically sustainable by limiting their catches under the over-exploitation level. When you look to the global trend in the state of the world's marine fish populations from 1974 to 2016, you can see that overfishing have progressed from 10% to 33%. Now, less than two thirds of the exploited populations are fished in a sustainable way here in blue. When you compare the situation of different parts of the world, you find that the Mediterranean and the Black Sea are in the worst state, with more than 62% of overfished populations. Fishing effort is defined as the quantification of all the means deployed by fishermen to make their captures. In metropolitan France, the number of professional marine fishing boats is decreasing down to 4,400 in 2015. But each boat is much more efficient by using new technologies such as acoustic fish detection. In fact, their global effort is increasing and the catches are still slightly progressing, for example, 1.1% in 2014. Another important fishing activity is represented by recreational fishermen not admitted to sell their captures. This recreational fishery is increasing. In 2011 and 2013, the, the eastern part of the coastal Mediterranean region concentrates more than 150,000 fishermen here in the red square of the map. 
the essentially target Seabrim, Sparus aurata in Latin, and Seabas, Dicentractus labrax in Latin. Another direct effect of fisheries concerns the habitat. For almost a century, fishing fleets have trawled for shrimps off Spain's Mediterranean coast by dragging nets along the flat, shallow coastal seafloor of shore Barcelona. But in the 1960s, they also started to pursue shrimp farther offshore and into red canyons as deep as 800 meters. You can see on the right the trace of the fishing gears on the sediments and on the left the trawler's trajectories. The deep sea ecosystem has been strongly affected. Trawlers are theoretically not admitted into the first three miles zone close to the shores, where we can see another direct effect of fishery on habitat, the lost fishing gears, also called ghost fishing. Here, the picture shows a gill net find in the Parc National des Calanques. As you can see, the remains of the dead fish in white testify that the fish net is placed for several days. The living and tangled fish show that the net is still fishing, but by chance there is a specific program called ghost med and the net was quickly retired from the water. A last example of fisheries impact on habitat is given by the ancient gear which was standing at the estuary of the small arm of the Rhone River. This net, called globe or cala, was used for the capture of migrating shad, sea bass, sea brim and mullets. It was responsible for the last capture of a wild sturgeon in 1972. It had been retired at the end of the 1980s. There is also indirect effects of fisheries, but they are more difficult to diagnose. The most famous of these indirect effects has been revealed by the team of Daniel Poli in 1998, who called it fishing down the food web. It is a global effect of fisheries on the whole ecosystem, which needs a long time series to be observed. It is based on the fact that fishermen target certain species that are the largest in size and the highest in the food chain. These large top predators disappear first and the catches progressively shorten in size and abundance, shifting to other smaller species having a lower situation in the food chain. At the end of the process, after several decades, remains only a few primary consumer species of fish with jellyfish. This phenomenon is symbolized here by the figure where the large arrow shows the evolution of the ecosystem from a diversified status of species and benthic habitat on the left to a poor and simplified one on the right. There are different regulations that can be taken for reduction of fisheries impact. The first is of course to ban deleterious fishing gears and poaching. Quantitatively, managers can limit the number of fishing licenses or put quota of catches. For example, there is a daily limit of three catches for sea bream and for sea bass in the Parc des Calanques. Qualitatively, managers can put a, a size limit on the catches. Most of the time, this size is determined by the size at first maturity to allow the species to reproduce at least once before it is targeted by fishermen. Managers may also impose a seasonal closure during the reproduction of the species. But all the, these regulation rules need law enforcement controls that are rarely available everywhere at sea. 
That's what the spatial dimension is very important and many of these regulations are most of the time in fact efficient only in limited marine protected area. To conclude, I want to illustrate this presentation with the case of Cap Couron Reserve situated in the northern part of the Bay of Marseille. The area of the reserve is delimited here by the black line of the maps. You can see on the left that the trawlers in red were regularly coming into the reserve area until anti-trawling artif artificial reefs were immersed in 1996. This shows that there are also physical ways to prevent from poaching. Cascading effects with the example of jellyfish and herbivory, prepared by Delphine Thibault and Thierry Thibault, both assistant professor. If we look at gelatinous zooplankton, two different groups can be found, the proper jellyfish and the tinophores. Proper jellyfish are characterized by bell, manubrium, oral rams, and tentacles. They do carry stinging cells, and they do have a meroplanktonic life stage, with a benthic polyp stage and sexual pelagic stage. If we look at tinophores, they are lobate, buried, or tentaculate. They don't have stinging cells, but sticky cells, and they have a holoplanktonic life cycles from an egg to a tentaculate larvae to the adult, and they are hermaphrodite. Nowadays, if they're more or less jellyfish, but it seems that they do actually play a strong role and a control in the food web. Jellyfish and tinophores are various predators. They show very high among the highest growth rates, reproduction rates, and feeding rates. They mainly prey on zooplankton. Zooplankton are also the food supply for small pelagic fishes, such as sardines, anchovies, and mackerel. Therefore, jellyfish or gelatinous zooplankton, carnivorous gelatinous zooplankton, are strong competitors to small pelagic fishes. Tinophores and jellyfish will also prey on small pelagic eggs and larvae. They can also withstand very strong pollution and low oxygen level. So several human forcing, such as overfishing, global warming, eutrophication, marine construction, and such as, can actually act as a strong stressor on the jellyfish population, increasing their presence in the ecosystem. Therefore, as Jellyfish prey on fish egg and fish larvae. The more jellyfish prevail, the more fish would be eradicated. Marine algal forests are strongly affected by herbivory, which is a result of a cascading effect with a loss of predator due to overfishing. In this picture, you can see a large group of uh, Salema sarpa sarpa, which is grazing. In, uh, on the algal population. In the eastern part of the Mediterranean Sea, we have uh, introduced an invasive fish, Siganus species, which are very uh, impacting the, the algal forest. As you can see in this picture, where the rocks are almost uh, are without algae. The result is like a, a moon landscape with a complete loss of all the vegetation. In this picture, you can see a large meadow of Cistodera taken in, 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 uh, in Corsica, and another impact is due to the sea urchins pollution. As you can see in the beginning, it's just a few meters which are impact, and if the pollution goes on, go on, you have a complete loss of the vegetation and the complete uh, real pollution of the sea urchins. So this is called a permanent shift of the ecosystem with a loss of the canopy algal forest and this loss can occur with only few individuals of sea urchins, two or three individuals 
which is leading to a barren ground or uh, to bush habitat, which is a complete uh, decrease of the capacity of hosting biodiversity.